Okay, good morning. It's a couple of minutes past eight. Well, on the West Coast, for you people on the East Coast, it's a couple of minutes past 11. And uh, let's go ahead and get started with this uh, Ultimate Forms webinar. Uh, we are going to be talking today about cross-site document sharing made easy. And we've got a couple of different things to show you that can help you make that job happen. Um, first of all, a little bit of introduction. Uh, my name is Phil Gold, for those of you who haven't uh, heard from me before. Uh, I'm a longtime communications and training professional. Um, I uh, spent 15 years at Nike as the uh, global training manager for Nike Technology. And in that role, um, I spent a lot of time working with SharePoint, teaching people how to use SharePoint, using SharePoint uh, uh, myself, setting up sites, helping people design sites. And I also used uh, InfoWise Ultimate Forms as a customer at Nike. We used it for quite a number of different things. Uh, and I always found it to be an extremely useful set of tools. Um, now, I left Nike uh, in 2017. Uh, me and 2,500 of my closest friends all were told we were no longer uh, no longer necessary. And uh, I went out and hung up my own shingle and started uh, writing courses for uh, InfoWise, or excuse me, for uh, LinkedIn Learning. Um, and uh, one of the courses that I had proposed to them was, hey, let's do a course about InfoWise because it's such a great tool. And the InfoWise guys didn't know I was going to do this, uh, and they saw it, and they were they were happy. And uh, I got a call and said, hey, thank you very much. And by the way, would you be interested in um, in working with us? And uh, that's why I am here today is because of uh, that serendipitous set of circumstances. Um, I can tell you from personal experience, um, InfoWise is one of the most useful tools for SharePoint that I personally have experienced. Um, if you are not familiar with InfoWise, what is InfoWise? It is a suite of tools that enable you to provide very quick, no-code solutions to real-world business problems. And we're only going to look at certain things today, but you know that's a general uh, assessment of what it is. So ground rules for today's session. Um, we've got uh, we've got another uh, InfoWise person available to us. So if you have questions during the presentation, use the questions tool in the uh, in the GoToWebinar window, uh, and they'll be answered over there. Uh, if we have time at the end of the presentation, if there are questions, we'll we'll answer some then. Um, and uh, I am recording this right now. So when we're done this afternoon, this recording will be available on YouTube. And it will also be available from the InfoWise website. And we're going to be having a little contest, um, a little giveaway. We've got an InfoWise polo shirt that we're going to give out at the end of the day. And I do apologize for this, but we can only send this to people in the United States because of the uh, the difficulties of shipping anything out of the country. Um, but, you know, all you U.S. people, you will be able to uh, uh, compete for that for that shirt. So let's start moving forward here. And what what is the problem? that we're we're trying to come up with a solution for. This is always a, a, a useful way to think about things is, you know, you, you don't create routines and tools and whatnot just to do them. You, you create them to solve problems. So the problem in this case is that if you've got uh, a SharePoint site or sites, you may have documents that are scattered across various different libraries. Um, and those libraries might even exist on different sites within the collection. And within those libraries, because it is possible to create custom permissions to protect certain documents, the permissions may vary quite a bit. So how can you make 
sets of documents available that are larger than just a library so that your users don't have to go from library to library to library to library looking for the things they're looking for but that when you surface stuff it'll all be within the permission ranges that they have the stuff that they see will be stuff that they're authorized to see and what about list information too i mean you know you talk about documents but what if you wanted to add in other information as well and surface that to your audiences well you know there's a couple of different ways to do this and one of the ways to do it is by using a hub site uh, in SharePoint Microsoft has in the in the especially if you're using the modern experience it is possible to set up a, a centralized hub site and then have libraries expose information within that hub site but I'll tell you it's kind of difficult um, I've tried to do this myself and I spent a few hours working on it and eventually gave up because I'm just not that diligent um, it was too hard uh, now if you're a really smart developer and you're used to you know writing code and, and getting all this stuff done maybe it's a different story but we're not all developers and we're not all coders most of us are just super users um, some of us aren't even that some of us are just plain old users and we want to make a solution that is within the realm of normal people to do and this is where Ultimate Forms comes in, because Ultimate Forms can do that. Ultimate Forms has a tool, a feature within Ultimate Forms that is called a roll-up. And a roll-up is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It will roll information up into one place from different places. Now, I have a little bit of a surprise for you. In case some of you have not already seen this, I'm going to go into Ultimate Forms. And you all know what Ultimate Forms looks like, right? Well, you may not because Ultimate Forms, the interface, has changed. This is the brand new, really spiffy, and much more colorful uh, interface that we have now for Ultimate Forms. This has been released, I think, um, a week and a half ago. So it's very, very new. Um, and, uh, I think that it is quite a bit easier to read what's going on in here as well. Um, I mean, I, I can see a lot more stuff in here, uh, and get to stuff a little bit simpler. Uh, it seems a lot clearer to read. So what we want to do, the, the thing that we need to do is we need to create a roll-up and that's here in the web parts area so I'm gonna click in roll-ups now I've actually created a couple um, so we'll look at the ones that we've got the first one that I did was um, a roll-up that only looked at one uh, site but looked at different uh, looked at different places within that site so we've got document rollout templates is the current site and the template list is this project document list you get to select which uh, list or document library you want to pick from there that's the one that I need and the template view is all documents I didn't put any filters in um, and I want it to group as a list or to group by the list and we've got unlimited items on the page. I mean, very, very simple choices that we need to make here to select what we want. Now, the second tab here is data sources, and this is where you tell it where you want it to look for. So I have set this one to look on the current site. The scope is the single site. So I, I'm only looking in the single site here. And I wanted it to look by specific lists. Your choices are you can look by the base type or by a template or specific lists when you're on the single site. You can also do the site and below, so the site and any subsites, or you can do the entire site collection. And we'll show you that in a minute. But for here, because I wanted to look at specific lists, you can only do that if you're in a single site. And then the lists 
I chose the lists directly from a picker. And this is all of the lists and libraries that are in the chart or in the site. So I just pick the ones I want and save that data source. And we can go ahead and cancel because I didn't change anything. We can actually cancel that because I didn't change anything. And so I've got this document roll up that has been created. Let's go to the page where I stuck that thing. Um, where's the, actually I put it, oh, I put it here on a roll up page. Now this is a modern page. Um, and I just wanted to show you how that works on a modern page. Actually, I'm going to edit and we'll take this out. Um, go away. Da, da, da. So inserting parts on a modern page is a little bit different than putting in parts on a, uh, um, a classic page. Uh, I'm going to take this one out because I'm going to put it right back in again. I think I'll take this one out as well. But what we need to do to add a part is you just click this little plus sign and then it asks you, well, what part do you want to put in? And we want an InfoWise roll-up. Uh, I probably went right past it. Yep, there it is. InfoWise roll-up. And it's telling us, you know, we need to... Uh, create the roll up first. This is the thing with the uh, the web parts is it's always best if you create them before you try and put them on a page. Because now that we've got it on the page, we can edit and pick the one that we want from the list of available ones and click the X there. And here is our roll up right there. I'll go ahead and publish this so that we can see what it looks like live. I have to fix that JSON error there. Sorry. So I have got, um, oh, I put the wrong one in. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, my mistake. Oh, there it is. Okay. I hadn't put the wrong one in. It just didn't, uh, didn't do it right. So we've got our, uh, our roll up here. Okay, and we can collapse the, uh, the, the different libraries. These are the three libraries that we selected. And so here are all of the documents and all of the files that are contained within those three. Now, of course, because I'm the owner of all these documents, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't really give you a sterling example of, uh, of permission uh, filtering, but you know, if there was something here that I wasn't authorized to see, it just wouldn't show up. Um, so now the second filter that we have in here, this cross site one, let's take a quick look at that as well. General settings. Now we're setting this for cross site. Uh, we're using the template is on the current site and the template list is the documents and the template view is all documents. So that's kind of the same. We're going to collapse this one by default, but we're going to group this one by site rather than by list. If we did it by list, it might be hundreds of, of lists. Uh, so we've got that. And then the data sources, this is a little different. So on this one, the site is the current site, but the scope is the entire site collection. And we're going to be locating by base type, which is basically going to give us pretty much everything. And then we're going to say document library. We'll go ahead and cancel that because we didn't change anything. And we'll go back to the roll up page and we'll edit this and we'll put this one in as well. I guess I can put it right here. Yeah. Just put it on top. There's our roll up. This is pretty easy to do, which I love. <laughs> I always like easy things. Um, and here you can see this is, this is all the different 
things that are located within the site collection. So everything in the site collection, all of the different lists, libraries, folders, um, it, this is this is very, very, very expansive. Now, if I had chosen to use the filters here, I could have uh, edited this down. Oh, the filters. You know, I could edit this down. I could have done it by project or I could have picked a, 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 a file type. Um, since we're doing the document list, I can do, um, let's say created equals, um, well, actually I probably created everything. That's not a good choice. Um, let's say, Uh, version equals three. So there's some things that I've changed more than once just to show a filter in action. And when I go back here, if I refresh this, it will probably make those changes right now. Got to fix that. Looking through, looking through, because it's applying the filter. Okay, well, I guess I didn't have anything that was version number three. Um, so the that's not the best example of the filter, but the filter did work because it filtered out everything that uh, did not fit the categories. Um, you know, what you're going to have to do, of course, for your purposes, you're going to need to know uh, what a reasonable a uh, set of filters are, you know, if your if your uh, items all refer to a certain set of data, it'll be easier. You can pick like a status field if you wanted to do uh, all status that is uh, equal to complete or something like that. So, you know, the um, the uh, the exact specifics of this, it's going to uh, depend on your search. Now, there is something else that you can do, and that is um, another way of defining and, and categorizing your data is to add in filters. And filters uh, work better with lists, but they can be used with lists and libraries as well. We've got an example on our demo site where we have a, uh, a dynamic dashboard that has been set up. And by the way, this is also uh, set up in a modern page. Um, we've got these charts that we've put in. And if you apply the filters, it will immediately start changing the data uh, to uh, match your filter sets. And filters are another one of those things that are really kind of easy to build. Um, now for that, we need to go back to the filter web part. Now you'll notice this is still in the uh, older interface. Uh, the rollups have already been converted to a newer interface and you're going to see a lot more things changing as time goes by. Um, and we'll have, to, uh, we'll have to be keeping up with the documentation, of course. Um, the functionality between the two different uh, uh, sets of tools really hasn't changed. It's right now, it's, it's really the layout that is different. Um, the tools that have been designed to work in the modern version still work in the modern version. They just look a little better in the interface. Um, so on this one, I've built a, a filter for the... Um, uh, PHO project list that I have, and it's very, very simple. Um, the name is projects. I've got labels. I've got the filter button. I want to show the clear button. These are the things that I'm filtering. Um, and uh, it's the choice. I, I built in one filter, which was the, the choice, the status column, uh, which is a choice column. And here are the choices that it holds. So we'll cancel that. We'll go back to um, the home page. Actually, I think I've got uh, oh, here. 
uh, go to site contents and we'll be able to pull it up quicker from there. Here's the PHO projects list. Here's my list right here. Um, and actually what I probably would do with this is because you, you don't really have the ability to put um, the filter on this page. So you really kind of need to create another page. And then you can put the, uh, the list in here. There's the list. Which list do we want? We want PHO projects. By the way, if you guys aren't playing with the modern experience, play with the modern experience. It's really pretty cool. Um, there's the, uh, I, as, as, as with everyone else, um, when I first saw the modern experience, I freaked out a little bit. Um, but the more I work with it, the more interesting things that I find. And um, yes, it is true that there are some things that you still can't do. Um, but, uh, it's, um, it's very easy to work with. Uh, so I, I'm kind of liking it right now. Okay. I've got three jobs that are in progress right now. If I change that to approval, how many have I got? Filter. I have to publish it. Uh oh. Okay. Well, I hit an error there, but I'm not going to worry about it. This, this is usually very, very simple and straightforward. Um, and if I'm having a, an issue with it, it's probably my issue. Um, but you can see when you are creating this, um, it really is a very, very handy way of building out, uh, filters for, your lists and you can do combo lists as well. Um, you know, when we're looking at filters, the general settings, um, the sales filter here, which I had, I think this was looking from, no, this was also looking at the status column in that, uh, in that, uh, list as well. Um, however, very, very handy tools, um, adds lots of functionality into your, uh, ability to, uh, locate stuff. The one other thing, and I really, I'm really not prepared to talk about this today, but I just thought about it. Um, while you're doing other things, the, the other, uh, InfoWise feature that you can build in is a specialized search. Uh, and then this can be added to your, uh, your web pages as well. So, and this is another one that, um, will search a larger, uh, set of documents. You know, this will go out across your whole site. You can pull, uh, all these different forms in. You can include pretty much anything that's on the one site. Um, doesn't go cross site. If you want to go cross site, the thing to use is rollups. Um, if you want to fine tune and search for information within a single site, then using the filter and using the search are both really handy ways of doing that. Okay. So that's pretty much what I needed to tell you about those two things. So now let's talk about something else. Um, next steps. So really what we want you to do for experimenting with this, these features and experimenting with the other features in ultimate forms, download the trial, go to the ultimate forms website. Um, and it's very easy to find. As a matter of fact, I'll show you exactly where it is. Ultimate Forms, InfoWiseSolutions.com, click Ultimate Forms, and download the free trial. Uh, and then depending on whether you have Office 365 or on-premise, 
Um, Office 365 is just a simple download. It's really, really easy. On-premise is a little bit more complicated because you have to uh, do a little bit more work to get it working. But, um, you know, I pretty much exclusively use the uh, Office 365 version, the online version. I love it. Um, I, I, I think it's the best. And I have to tell you, it's always going to be the version that's going to be the most up to date, um, both for in, uh, Ultimate Forms and for SharePoint in general. Um, Microsoft is very, very clear that they are releasing to O365 first, and then they'll release to the on-premise when they get around to it. But you know, when you have uh, an on-premise installation of SharePoint, when you need to update it, it's quite a complicated thing. Uh, when you have O365, you don't have to worry about updating. They do it for you. So O365, uh, guys, that's the way to go. Um, now, if you buy InfoWise, if you buy Ultimate Forms, uh, unlimited support is included with the license. Uh, we do have a two-hour Kickstart training. Um, that's a, a, a video training, and that's in the process of being rebuilt right now to make it uh, match the uh, changes to the UI that have happened recently. Uh, we also have more in-depth training available to people. Uh, we've got uh, a uh, five-hour uh, foundation class. Uh, and then there's another five hour advanced class um, and they go over mm, mm, almost almost all of the features in Ultimate Forms. I mean, there's a lot of features in Ultimate Forms, guys. You saw how many things there were there. Um, but certainly you get good experience working with all of the major ones, um, how to create forms, how to create uh, uh, custom columns, how to do validation how to uh, set up associated lists. Um, it's really very, very in-depth and you, you, it's a hands-on lab that you work through a um, series of problems to come up with the solutions. And you definitely come out of there knowing a lot more than you went in. Um, if you want a product demo, we give half hour, uh, 45 minute demos of the product, quick walkthroughs. You can request that from the website uh, and somebody will be in contact with you to set that up. Uh, there is also a, um, a pre recorded version of the demo if you look in the uh, blogs section on the website. Um, there's actually quite a bit of information on the website right now. There's lots and lots of tutorials. Um, we are in the process of updating them to match the current. Uh, changes to the UI, but the functionality as described is still pretty much the right uh, the right way of doing things. You just have to get to stuff a little bit differently. There's also uh, recordings of webinars that we've done in the past. There's blogs, there's other posts. It's all available from the website. And there is, as I say, a pre-recorded version of the standard demo uh, it was done about nine months ago, so it doesn't have the most recent features on it, but uh, it'll still give you a good overview, and I guess it's probably time for me to redo that thing. Um, you can also contact us. You can contact me directly, or you can contact the sales department, uh, and uh, they'll be, you know, we'll be happy to uh, get something set up for, uh, for a demo. Um, I'm going to be doing a demo for a SharePoint users group in Idaho uh, in a month or so. So, you know, if you've got something like that where you want us to present to a large group, get in contact with us. Let us know. We'll be happy to do that. Um, and then join us for next month's webinar. Uh, actually, next month, we're I know we're doing a build it session because I'm doing it. I'm going to be. Um, building out um, some automated routines to uh, provision new SharePoint sites. I'm going to be doing some advanced uh, action workflow stuff. So you might want to check that out. Information about that is on the uh, website and I believe also on the uh, uh, 
front page of the, uh, the program itself. So you can see that from both places. Now, it's time for the giveaway. So what I would like you to do, um, people in the United States, only people in the United States, uh, because it's too difficult otherwise, I would like you to pick a number from one to 100, only answer once, please. And I have the number in my head and the first person who hits the number or gets close to the number um, will be the winner. And when everybody's done answering, whoever got closest is going to be the winner. So let's just take a minute there. <laughs> let's see. No, no, no. That's closer. Okay. Keep those cards and letters coming in. Uh, somebody asked, will this be published to the website? Yes, absolutely. This, uh, this uh, video is being recorded and it will be on YouTube and on the InfoWise website later today. Okay. Has everybody who's going to guess guessed? Is everybody done? Going once, going twice, going thrice. Okay, in that case, the winner is um, John Morrison. John Morrison. Uh, John, I'd like you to please um, send me an email, and that was uh, at uh, Phil at, uh, oops, Phil G at InfoWiseSolutions.com. Um, send me an email, give me your shirt size and your mailing address, please, and we will make sure that this gets out to you. So congratulations, John Morrison, you are today's winner. And with that, I'm going to say thank you to everybody. Uh, appreciate you uh, stopping in with us today and uh, hope that uh, you found this informative, hope that it piqued your interest and uh, we will uh, possibly see you in the, uh, in the next uh, webinar and uh, we will see you online. So th thank you very much. Were there any other questions? I think Vladi has been answering questions as we've been going here. Okay. Well, if there are no other questions, I am going to say goodbye to you all. So thank you very much for attending. Bye-bye.